What it do, world? It's your boy, Mr. D. We are the Tap Dead Sports Podcast, and we are back for another great week. Shout out to y'all for joining us. First off, before we get it started, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you are following us on all social media outlets. We are at Tap Dead Sports Online. And tonight, joining me on the early set, back for another one. He blessed us last week with his presence. Hey, coach, you already know QP is in the building. What it do, my guy? How you feeling? What up, what up, what up, my dude? Appreciate y'all for having me again. Yes, sir. Back for another one. So once again, shout out to y'all for joining us. I'm going to have my guy Big Dex for the whole crew. They're going to be in the building with us. We're going to get it started off on the early set, jumping off. First up, we have finally made it, my brother. We have finally completed the NBA playoffs. We have crowned a champion. And if you don't know by now, the Boston Celtics have won their 18th title. Uh, in game five, 106 to 88. The Mavericks was keeping pace for a while at the start of the game, but Boston went on a 9 0 run to close out the first quarter, giving them a 10 point lead. They grew to 21 by halftime, and the Celtics never looked back from that point. You had Jason Tatum with 31 and 11. Finals MVP Jalen Brown, he had 21 points, and Drew Holiday finished with 15. So, my guy, QP. I need you to tap in for me, brother. Just give me your overall thoughts. Tap in. I'm going to say this. That game went exactly like I thought because I said in game four, everybody made a big deal about Dallas. Dallas thing, something they made an adjustment with their defense. Yeah, the only adjustment they made was Boston didn't show up. Boston wanted to win that chip in Boston and celebrate with their fans. And game five came and what happened? just like all the other games. Man. I think Boston just felt overly confident they could just do whatever they wanted in this series. Man. Anytime a team goes up and you have a chance to close it out and they don't, man, that's toying. They want to win that at home, like I said, man. Have fun with their fans and celebrate. Man. They got 18 championships. Lead the NBA. Why wouldn't you want it at home? I think that's what happened, too, in game four. It took their foot off the gas and was just like, you know what, bump this. We'll just win it at home. Once they came out in game four, they saw that they didn't really have it. Basically, by halftime, you pretty much knew, hey, they're going to close it out in game five. When you just outmatch like that, it's just really going to be hard for you to rebound and be able to get your game going. The finals, it was pretty good to me. But Luca just let me down. That's probably my biggest takeaway from it. I thought he was going to be able to be a little bit more of a defensive presence because we already know what he can do on the offensive side. But I thought he was going to be able to lead them a little bit more on the defensive end and not be a liability. But they was able to pick him out. I thought they was going to put up a better fight. I thought it was going to be at least six games. You know, I was looking for them to adjust when Boston got them down. It was just in game four, a matter of them not wanting to be swept and not wanting yeah. to get embarrassed at home. If you can make them adjustments in game four, why couldn't you make them adjustments earlier in the series? Why do you think Coach Kidd wasn't able to make those adjustments earlier? For one, the first two games in Boston, I'll say for Dallas, it was an introduction to the finals. And once you get to the finals, man, it's different. And if you don't have guys that don't have that experience of being on that stage, I don't care how many years you've been professional, it's just different. The atmosphere, the energy in the arena is different. And it'll have you doing stuff you've never done before, man. And that man. was Dallas this year. It was, was espe Dallas. especially Kyrie, because I don't know if he owe a, a voodoo woman some money in Boston or whatever, but it was just like in Boston, he could not get out of his own way. Like, he could not get it going for nothing in Boston. In Dallas, he was exploding. And when he come to Boston, he, he giving you 12. He giving you 15, 16 a game. And so that really hurt them, like I said, in that Kyrie was not able to step up and produce. All right, joining the show. What to do, my brother? My boy, Big Dicks in the building. How you feeling today, my brother? How y'all living? Man, we living oh, good, man. my brother. Chopping it up on this NBA Finals. Just going over some things that we saw during the Finals. What is your overall takeaway from the NBA Finals, Dicks? Tap it. Well, that's the team that was supposed to win one. They were the best team all year. They ain't really have no real, like, adversity this whole year. I didn't see any adversity they had. They stuck to the game plan they didn't have for the past four or five years and ran it through the two top guys and got the other guys involved. They got a lot of unselfish people over there. Even they top two players don't really care if they are the lead scorer or not the lead scorer. They just want to win, and that's good to have, especially going forward. You can always build around that. And Derek White probably going to be there for a long time because of the fact of just that. And he don't care about anything but winning. They're going to keep Drew as long as Drew can be there. The real question, how long is Al Horford going to play now? Al's last year of college was my last year of college. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm at like, home chilling. Like, I'm at home chilling. But that, hey, you said something that was real key, man, about the Celtics sharing their wealth, dog. With, I think with them having been on this stage before, been in the conference finals multiple times, unlike Dallas, they mm-hmm. knew exactly what it took. And Tatum, and, mm-hmm. and as much as we talk about it, man, Tatum not getting MVP and people talking about how bad he played. Man, that man does not care. He is a champion now. He got what he mm-hmm. really wants. He sure know what to say. And their role players was off the chain. Their role mm-hmm. players was the biggest oh, difference yeah. for Boston. Jalen Brown, you already know, he was off the charts phenomenal. Y'all just and he and he been that way all playoffs. And it wasn't just the finals, but they had rebounding. They was getting back on defense. It was just those little things. And then as you see Peyton Pritchard, he was able to come in and give him that spark with those uh, half court buzzer beaters and different things like that. So Dallas was just really outmatched when it came to the finals this year. Yeah, and it just. But again, this is a. It ain't just two guys. It's a culture. Ever since they broke up, Paul Pierce and all them, they really just been trying to. Focus on team building. That's all they did was collect draft picks to get the certain guys that they wanted and put them all together. And if they didn't fit, move them on out and brought in guys that fit their molds. I think they still got draft picks now. <laughs> so yeah. it's just going. I don't see it stopping. It is going to be hard to match it. Because like you saw, you had two ISO guys who can pretty much do what they want to do, but that didn't phase anything. It didn't do anything. They lost one game, and they could have won that game, really if they would have made a push in the third. But it just – it's hard to beat a system that's based off of being unselfish and nobody really caring about who does what. The Spurs were dominant for 20 years doing just that. Tim Duncan didn't care. He didn't care if it was Manu. He didn't care if it was Tony. He just wanted to win, and that built off everybody else. So if Tim ain't complaining about shots, how can I complain? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't say nothing. This man, he was the first finals MVP. He's a – NBA MVP, he's a multiple time all star, all defense, all NBA, and he don't complain and he listens to the coach and he play like a rock. Yeah, I just gotta shut up. <laughs> Let me play my role and stick to it. It's hard to beat that. Oh yeah, as long as they got that. And shout out to Joe Missoula. You gotta give him a lot of props because he was able to come in and put in his system. He was able to establish his game plan and keep them focused because once he first came in, it was a lot of stuff going on around them, especially with Yudoka being fired, let go, and Joe Mazzula having to come in and make them big decisions, and Brad Stevens for having to make them big decisions, and for Brad Stevens to have the foresight and bring in Drew Holiday and Chris Dasporzingis. A lot of credit needs to be given to Brad Stevens because they most definitely made some key moves that was able to get them over the hump. They, they got their 18 championships. And as you can see, I have the predictions over here at the Tapped In Sports Podcast. A lot of the fellas had Dallas and six, but me in the live five, shout out to Q Will. He'll probably be on a little bit later. Me and him picked Boston. He picked Boston in four. I picked Boston in seven. I, I don't know who had the best prediction, but hey, we both we gonna claim that, that dubs. Hey, shout out to Boston and shout out to the finals MVP, Jalen Brown. Do you all think that they got it right? Without a doubt, man. Without a doubt. So here's why I say Jalen Brown was the MVP. Yes, Tatum had the better scoring at him. He had the better rebound. But what was his real effect? If you go back and look at the first couple of games, Tatum shot the ball terribly. So him becoming a playmaker, he had to become a playmaker in order for him to be effective. He did what everybody say do. Hey, do something else. It's other things to do besides scoring. And Tatum did that. As far as JB, man, JB's effect on this finals was just better than Tatum's all around. He guarded Luka. Yeah, Luka still averaged 30, but Luka had some games where he didn't shoot the ball with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he may have had a 30-point triple-double, but he was 12 for 28, 12 for 29. That's Jalen Brown effect and Drew Holiday. And Jalen shot the ball extremely well. You can't argue with that. that. I don't think he had a game besides four. Well, he shot under 50% from the floor. Yep. And when that happens, you can't argue with that. Look at game five. Going into game four, they both had just about the same amount of points. I think it was a one or two point dip. Tatum goes off for 11 when the game is the side. Your 30 point triple double means nothing at this point, man. The game's been over with since the third quarter. So I think had he had that 30 point triple double going into the four, then we probably would have saw Tatum win. Be Diggs, tap in, my brother. Did they make I mean, the right choice? It wasn't no wrong answer in my mind. I'm like, anybody you would have went with deserved it from 
Jason to Jalen to Drew. Hell, you could even gave it to Porzingis for coming back and playing. Like, yeah. it was Brad Stevens, the MVP. I mean, he, he made it so we even having a discussion about who the MVP because of all the talent he acquired that's not going to just pay dividend now, but going to pay dividend later because they're going to grow together. To me, it ain't no wrong gown, so they all play their part. But like you said, you can go with Jalen because of everything he listed, like guarding the toughest guy on the opposite side and nullifying that 30 and making it a hard 30 because it was a hard 30. It wasn't just him going down there and dominating because we know he averaged more than 30 during the season. So you done mm-hmm. knocked off about five points of his regular average in the playoffs, making him work harder, making his shooting percentage lower, making him have to shoot more to get to average less than he did during the regular year and also tiring him out. So he ain't got nothing to give you on the defensive end. So it was Jalen Brown did a lot, not just offense, not just on defense, but some stuff that ain't even going to be recorded because that's just what you do when you play in your role in a great system. And that's what he did. It just looked like the beginning of that Golden State <laughs> yeah, dynasty. Do it. Antonio Dynasty where Cat's going to keep on going until it run out of fuel. Oh, yeah. I got to agree with y'all. They did get it right. He was the most dominant player on both sides of the ball for Boston. That's why he was able to get seven out of the 11 votes that they cast for the finals MVP. He had 30 points, eight rebounds, eight assists, and one block in game three. And I think it was really the defensive presence that he provided for them. He limited Luka in game five. He was able to make him exert himself a lot. On the defensive side, where we know Luca don't work hard on the defensive side, he was uh, consistently picking them up full court. Game five, he spent seven minutes guarding Luca, and Luca went two for six for shooting, and he scored 20 points in four of the five games uh, that the Boston Celtics won. I was campaigning for my guy to win it the whole time because he got snubbed this year on the All NBA teams. I think he deserved it, and he went out there and they, he proved it. Brad Stevens for all. Don't get me wrong, he wasn't he wasn't a bad coach in the NBA. He was a great offensive coach. He just couldn't get the Celtics over the hump. And kudos to him for being smart enough to realize and say, hey, this is not what I'm cut out for anymore, but I'll definitely go to the front office. Because at first I thought this is going to be a work in progress, but once you think about it, he in his domain. Just like he back at Butler. He picking what he wants. Now, the real job is going to come in, can he sign Derek White back? Because right now, Derek White is going to command $30 million on the market. And the Celtics are, if, if they can pay Derek White, Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum, and Porzingis, them dudes' pockets is different than everybody else in the league. Then <laughs> we're talking about a baseball salary cap. But Brad Stevens deserves a lot of credit, man. Even hiring Missoula because Missoula had to learn last year. He had to go through the mistakes he made last year and, the fi- and in the finals that year. That was he made. But Joe was on that staff as well. So Joe had to learn as well. And kudos, like I said, kudos to Brad, man, because Brad made all the right moves with this team, man, over the past couple of years. Yeah. Do y'all think he deserved the most credit for their 18 championship, or do we pass it around? More Jason Tatum, more Jalen Brown. Somebody who deserved the most credit. Oh, that's Brad. Yeah. Brad. It's, this is, it started with him. Like he said, he started as the coach. Then he saw he could do more moving upstairs. And that's what he did. He went on and did that. It all starts and ends with him because of what he brought in from Butler. It just fit. The players fit in, they bought in. It just seemed like they pressed a lot of the right buttons and he knew what he wanted to do, especially when he quit coaching. He wanted to keep that going. He didn't want to build on what he had. He knew how far he could take it. And he knew somebody else could take it a little bit further. Who was a well, NBA coach. He was a college coach. These people, Missoula was an NBA coach. I don't think he, I'm trying to remember, if he had a college coaching job, has he always been an NBA assistant? Uh, it was like a D3, like Granville or Grandview yeah. State or something like that. It was low D3. Oh, so yeah, he's always been an NBA coach. So it's just, I got to go with Brad Stevens being that guy to do it. And everything works down from there because everybody else bought in under him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brad about to earn his keep now. He's going to have to figure out how he's going to keep this team together. And if he can't, who can you put in place of the people you're going to lose? Like Derek White. There's going to be a team that's going to give Derek White more than the $30 million that he's commanding right now. Somebody's going to be like, hey, let's see if Boston really wants to match this. 
And don't get me wrong, Derek White's a very good NBA, but I don't think Derek White is no 35 to $45 million player. Do you all think Luka hurt his legacy in this finals? I, I don't think he hurt it. But I'm going to say this. He's probably, he's alienated some fans. I don't, he's young enough to where he can recover. He's only 25, so he can recover. But he's going to have to get more effort on the defensive end, man. That's just where it starts at, man. Luka is brilliant. Luka's an offensive genius. The way that this guy can manipulate and control the pace and tempo of a basketball game by himself is just crazy. But, with all that being said, he won't do any of that on the defensive end. And it's not like you're being asked to go guard Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Most nights when you're playing a team like that, he's guarding the worst offensive player on the other team. So there's no reason for you to be that bad defensively. That's just you not wanting to. So hopefully this finals open his eyes and shows him like, man, I got to give at least 30% more effort on the defensive end. That could have made a big difference. But also, if you look in history, there has never been a guy in the NBA that has won a championship and not given effort on the defensive end. Not a guy. Mm. James Harden, no champion. As, as much as people stat, rag, Steph Curry gave effort. At one point, Steph Curry was the best screen heads in the league to me because he didn't want to switch out. But Luka doesn't do that. Until he does that, Dallas is going to be in this position every year and be like the Cowboys. Oh, man, don't do it like that, Kel. Why you got to do it like that? <laughs> Dex, talk to me. Did Luca hurt his legacy? I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he missed no spot on that one because real life, I'm a James Harden guy, but it's just reality. If you ain't, if you give somebody an opening, they're going to take it. And he gives the other team openings as far as in the end. It didn't matter when they played the Clippers. That was the first round. It didn't matter when they played OKC in the second round. That was the second round. It didn't matter when they played Minnesota in the third round. But when it came down to playing the, the best team in the league and you gave the best team in the league a weakness to attack, they kept attacking it. And that's just what it was. Oh, yeah. And if you don't want to target on your back as that guy to go at, because we know he ain't going to give an effort, you got to get better. You got to show somebody that you're going to try. And I ain't saying be all defensive team guy, but like at least let people know, nah, we can't just go at him all game because he gonna Dang. slow us down and he gonna ruin momentum. Did it hurt his legacy? Nah, 25 years old. He gonna have to build off of it and he gonna have to learn to get better. We have seen people in those situations where they hit this shot and they never get back because they didn't take that first chance in serious. Jason Tatum, have he finally silenced the critics or are they gonna be back at his door want him to do more? Because he got one. You already know that. Yeah. But you, know, you know how they going to do it. It's never enough. Never. Never, man. Let that man he live, man. Live. He just won the championship. He led his team. Right. On. It's gonna be led his team in assists. He led his team in rebounding. And, yeah, like Dex said, man, that, that MVP could have went to either one of them. And you still would have had this conversation. But Tatum's going to be fine, man. He finally got the, the monkey off his back, and that's what mattered, getting that monkey off his back. Now, I want to see how he responds next year. Now, if he has that same issue next year, now we got a bigger problem. I'm really ready to see when are we going to see somebody ever repeat again because it don't look like it's going to happen. <laughs> Man. Ah, this is looking like it's gonna be a new, it's gonna be a new champion every year. Hey, we rocking, we rolling, man. Shout out to y'all for coming out tonight, man. It's your boy, Mr. D. I'm in the building with my guy, Big Dex. I got Coach QP in the building. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow us on all social media outlets. We are the podcast with the barbershop vibes. We are the tapped in sports podcast. So I want to ask you all, we still talking about the NBA. Shout out to the Celtics winning their 18th championship. Now leading the NBA all time with the championships. Is this Celtic team a top five team of all time? Tap in. Shit, I was just looking at that. And based off the record of their regular season, not for real, but just based off of how they outscored everybody and how they play together and how they fit, they can be. But it's just still early for them. I still need to see more. With especially what they do after this.
for me to say that. They got the potential to be one of the greatest teams, greatest legacies, I should say. They should have the potential to have a great legacy in this era if they keep going. I ain't seen enough from them. That's just yeah, my thing. Yeah, I, I can't say one of the greatest at this time. Do they have that, op that opportunity? Oh, yeah. Anytime you have two guys like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown as your best two players, and then you have a role guy that has been an all-star and a champion that just plays his role, doesn't complain, doesn't do nothing in Drew Holiday, and is that special on the defensive end? Yes, you have an opportunity to become an all-time team. Mm -hmm. But I think that happens if they're able to repeat again. Oh, shout out to y'all oh. once again for joining us tonight. And I got a special guest jumping in, joining us, my brother, Rush Tight, friend, man of Kappa Alpha Psi, my guy, the one and only, Mr. Chicago, Marlon Williams is joining the show. How you feeling tonight, my brother? Good, man. How's it going, man? How you living? Man, living good, brother. We've been talking about a lot. We done talked about the, the NBA Finals, so I want to give you your chance to go ahead and do your thing. Tell me what you saw about the NBA Finals, what you think about the NBA Finals. Just go ahead and, man, just let loose, my brother. <laughs> All right, man. First and foremost, again, thank you for having me on the show. I, I definitely think that this was more team-oriented of a Finals. We got a chance to see a, a better team won. They had better supporting cast around them with Jalen Brown and, and Tatum. They had bigger bodies out there too that could obviously out rebound and, and out defend. So they play a hell of a ball game throughout the series as team basketball in general, but more specifically team defense. Jalen was obviously the best player on the floor when it came, especially when it came defensively, because he was putting clamps down in certain cases on Kyrie and on Luca. Tatum picked it up out the wow. So it was times where Brown was lacking, Tatum picked it up for him. And when Tatum was lacking, Brown picked it up, right? So, and seeing how Al Horford, Drew Holiday, and even Chris Stapps, even with the little that he did do in the last game, he, he was still an impact player because his presence being seven foot two, seven foot three, yeah. out there on the, guy on the floor made a difference because they didn't have an answer for those big guys. PJ Washington did as good as he could do. Uh, the other guy, I forget his name, li likely was decent off the bench too, but Dallas just didn't have enough around Luka, or they didn't get enough support around Luka and Kyrie. Kyrie, Kyrie this wasn't his series, man. He, he didn't show up. He only showed up for at least one game, but I was like, I don't know. I don't know if it, if, if it was the, the crowd getting to him out there in Boston. Boston is a racist ass city. <laughs> but the hatred and vitriol, some of it was warranted. Kyrie kind of brought it on himself being the way he made the move from Boston over to Brooklyn. But then some of it, obviously, because I was one of the first people who said when he got to Dallas, I was like, this shit ain't going to work. It, they, mm. He's too ball dominant and Lucas too ball dominant. It's only one ball. But they made it work and got to the finals. They went up against a better competition in the Western Conference than Boston did the Eastern Conference. A lot of people gave Boston shit for the easy road they had, but you play in, in like most cases. Show up. You play who show up. And yeah. obviously Cleveland wasn't gonna beat no Boston Celtic team too. So we, <laughs> we knew that shit was gonna happen. We knew Indiana or New York wasn't gonna beat them. It, it is what it is from that standpoint. But Jalen Brown did say that the MVP could easily win to pay him too. Numbers wise, I, I'm old fashioned. I'm used to seeing a superstar player just outperforming and out dominating everybody and having astronomical numbers to win the Ponzi MVP. But Needless to say, Jalen, I don't have a problem with Jalen winning. I prefer, I would have preferred Tatum to win it, but I don't have a problem with Jalen winning it. And in all likelihood, it should have been a co-MVP. I don't think it's ever been a yeah. co-MVP. It, it uh, That's it, what it should have been. But it could have easily been both of them. Tatum's numbers were slightly better. He shot more. His, his field goal percentage was a lot less. But... Defensively, Tatum I mean, Brown showed up a little bit more than, than Tatum did in certain aspects, and Brown definitely played a much more physical game. Some areas Tatum was playing a little more finesse, and he was shooting the damn three ball too much. I hate the fact that Boston got 18, puts us further back because we still only got six. Because I dumb it on, I ain't trying to prioritize building the team to get us to a place where we should at least had 10 by now. But that's another story for another day. Point is. Dallas just didn't have enough, man. They, they had enough firepower. They had enough. They didn't get enough from their supporting cast. 
I'm not gonna put a whole lot of blame on him because he, he could do all he did all he could do. There wasn't Everything. too much else that he could have done, especially given that he was in some cases one on ten or one on eight. He was going against eight players. Boston was rotating players, and everybody was contributing the way they knew how to contribute. But overall, the better team won. Kudos to Jalen. Jalen got that three hundred some million dollars and just proved it this year. I still feel like Jalen and Tatum are star players. I don't feel like they're superstar uh, players. I think Jason Tatum is a superstar. I think he's a superstar. Uh, listen, D. These numbers didn't stand out to me. Nobody dominated in this. No, that no, ain't, no. I'm, that, I'm, that I'm, ain't not, superstar not. shit. We I, know a superstar. He didn't play to the level of a superstar, but that's what Jason I'm saying. Tatum, like, you no, would consider him a superstar. And, and that's why I can't consider him that. Not yet. He got to show me more than that. Ah. He was showing me 10 and 15 points in a playoff game. When, listen, again, I don't like comparing anybody to my boy. I don't like comparing. No, I don't like none of these to be compared to my boy. But we going to talk about, like, playoff dominant. You ain't seen him do what he did. And you ain't going to ever see it again. But... That don't mean that we can't see dominant performances. One or two games is one thing, but I hadn't seen enough. Those are not standout, dominate numbers. They, again, everybody was like, listen, the numbers don't tell the whole truth. I get that, but you still got to go out there and ball the hell out when you want to get them title. They won it, and they won it as a team. I give them mad respect for that shit. We got to give that time first before we can sit up here and, and crown them next year. Oh, yeah, because there's a lot of stuff that's supposed to be going on. In the off season, a lot of different things, a lot of moving parts that's going to be going yeah. on. But we're going to leave it right there as far as the NBA Finals. Shout out to yeah. the uh, Boston Celtics for coming through. Shout out to y'all for joining us. We are the Tap Dead Sports Podcast. It's your boy, Mr. D. I got my guy, Big Dex, in the building. I got Coach QP in the building and joining the show. I got my guy, Mr. Chicago, Marlon Williams, in the building. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow us on all social media outlets at Tap Dead Sports Online. So going next, hot off the press, the Lakers have officially found their next coach in J.J. Reddick. The former NBA player has agreed to a four-year deal, around about $8 million or something like that per year. He was the front runner at first, but then they pursued Dan Hurley from UConn, but we know he turned that down, and they hired J.J., but Rob Palenka said that what really stood out to him was his basketball IQ and his ability to connect with the players. So, somebody, anybody, was this a good hire for the Lakers? Tap in. Yeah, it'll, it'll depend. Like, by name, I guess. But it's just all based off what happens now because we've all seen the carousel. The past two coaches the Lakers had in the first year, they made the Western Conference Finals. Vogel made the finals. And then the next year... They didn't make it out the first round. Like they said, he's 15 years in the league, and he know how to break down the game based off of his podcast. We saw that, and we know that he has been close to the game since he's retired, since he's been on ESPN, and he's been announcing games. But it's just, is all of that going to translate? Is We'll see. I know that a lot of guys who were Lakers this year were just disgruntled based off of, like, the lack of game planning, but also it just seemed like, they didn't really run plays most of the year. I got to see what he does and what moves they make and everything that comes after it. I'm excited, but as far as saying is it a good move, I'm going to have to see because I like Darvin Ham. I like Frank Vogel. Hell, I even like uh, Luke Walton. So I'm just like, I'm just waiting to see what they do and if anything comes from it. All right, QP. To me how that is going to look to everybody else in the locker room because he has the podcast with Bron. After y'all finish playing games, are they going to jump on the podcast together? Things of that nature. How is the locker room going to react to that? Because I'm sure everybody already knows. It's going to go how Bron says anyway. But now it already goes how he says and J.J. is in his back pocket. This has the potential to be nasty, man, and especially with Anthony Davis because that's who they want to transition the franchise to after everything is done and over with. What if Anthony don't like playing for J.J.? Then what? Mm. It's a slippery slope, but hey, I'm not a Lakers fan, so kudos to him. We thank you because we know y'all not going for a tip next year. All right, Marlon, tap in. Was this a good hire for him? Hey, listen, man. Y'all yeah, indulge me for a second. Okay, I am about ahead. to take this shit so far left. This is about to be a shit show. 
I, listen, man, white privilege ain't gonna ever die here. You're gonna sit here and tell me with a straight face that a person like J.J. Reddy, who has no coaching experience whatsoever, he gets his first damn coaching job as the damn Lakers head coach? That's like taking your driver's ed test for the first time in the goddamn school bus. How enough do you think <laughs> you're going to be successful with being the, Lake, the Lakers? The Lakers, a story franchise, and you're going to be their coach for the first time ever coaching? Goddamn, listen, first off, D, he's getting fired after a year and a half, two years max. I, what? I, you couldn't book it. He won't play. I'm telling you this right now. He's LeBron's homeboy. You give a goddamn coaching job on podcast, and I should have three phone calls right now. What <laughs> in the entire fuck and a half are they fucking thinking? <laughs> this is moronic shit, man. You, you, this, this is LeBron's homeboy. Ain't nobody going to respect him. No one is going to respect him as a coach because he, all the he's going to do is what the LeBron says to me. And I saw really? LeBron. Time after time again on the sideline with Darvin Ham throwing a bit, sitting up here telling them what plays to call, telling them to, to challenge the call. This grew up bit so damn bad. He was over here stomping like a six year old. My daughter really, does man. some shit like that. That is <laughs> utterly ridiculous. And the fact that this man keeps getting people fired because they ain't his homeboy and they ain't gonna listen to every word that he utters out of his mouth. And the next you wanna get him fired. You got to be the dumbest in the world. Darvin Ham. It wasn't all his fault that this Lakers team was shitty, but he still took some blame for it. He don't take, he don't deserve all the blame for it because when you had all these kids around uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron and they wasn't contributing enough, you should have made some damn moves early on to get rid of them and get some more people. LeBron, they still wanted, losing. LeBron wanted his homeboys and wanted names and his favorite players and shit to come play for him and play with him or the goddamn Lakers and the shit didn't fucking work. Wait, time out. So we blame him, but y'all don't blame nobody else but nobody coach getting fired. Because he, well, I, I, that's a lie because I'm blaming Giannis ass for getting Griffin fired. Don't you dare pull that shit with me. No, nah, y'all do it. Like, like, I'm just saying, it. y'all do it. Frank Vogel finna get fired at Phoenix. No, he already got fired at Phoenix. My bad. Yeah, he did. Got he fired at One year. And then Frank Vogel got fired at Phoenix too. Monty Williams yeah. got fired on some with his team. But I'm just game. saying, Frank Vogel didn't even last a year in Phoenix. Frank Vogel didn't even last a year in Phoenix. And they fired him off his first year. You got to get dumb as fuck to money like that. Frank Vogel. just get fired every day. I'm not Frank getting Vogel it. got fired, and I'm pretty sure KD and Booker didn't help him. I never hear LeBron advocating for some black coaches to keep a job or get a job or be rehired or whatever the case may be. But because this nigga did a podcast with this here, now they're going to be on a podcast talking about the games that they just played and coached in. And, and the fact that you're acting as if, though, LeBron ain't his ass hustling. You can over-talk me, but it ain't going to change the fact that Mike Brown is coached for five years and Teron Lewis is coached for four years and he went on that side. You can over talk me and say that he don't advocate for black coaches. With the Clippers, he's better off. He's got to get Teron Lou back with the Lakers. I'm like, I'm confused. It ain't going to happen. But I'm just saying, you say he don't advocate for black coaches. Mike Brown's coach of the year, we got them Sacramento Kings, though. And he didn't even make the playoffs. You're saying this LeBron fall when everybody else fall off. Uh, it's more of it. Listen, when you see other mo- when you see these motherfuckers playing better and coaching better when they're not around LeBron, who coach? Who's playing better? Tell you something. Who coaching? Who playing better? Who playing better? Like Tell me. Who I'm just saying LeBron took him to the team finals. Team. LeBron took him to the finals the first year as a Cavs head coach. But hey, let me. He don't hey, do. Hey, you're hey. saying the main don't like black coaches. You saying he don't give him a chance. And Teron Lou got a chance because of LeBron James. Another goddamn chance. I ain't, well, obviously Mark Jackson another goddamn chance. Hey, 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 that's the NBA though, Marlon. That's the NBA. You got to give every black coach a chance. NBA now, so you know it's LeBron. Ball. It's a fucking coach to you. That's the tallest glass of dirty boy shit with some goddamn ice in it. It get weird. Damn. Shit. LeBron's supposed to get every black coach a chance, although he gave two of them a chance and took them to the finals. Why is he always crying and shit and always want something then? Because every other NBA player crying. But every other NBA player cry. Why are you worried about him more than you worried about everybody else? He cried the most. And he cried the loudest. You sure? Or oh, wait, wait a minute. Come on, Marlon. Now, we ain't going to say Marlon. my boy. He don't cry the most now. Wait a minute now, Marlon. You can't do my boy so, like if that, we, If I pull up that YouTube, YouTube post of your boy 
Of your boy Michael Jordan jumping up and down and pouting. They got a 23 minute compilation of them. Power drive by motherfuckers. Unlike your dude. Nah, nah. All of them is refs calling fouls on him and him jumping up and down. So you gonna sit up here and lie again? People <laughs> 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 will give him his flowers when he do something right, but they won't criticize him when he says something else. That ain't that what you just said? Niggas be lying. What? <laughs> <laughs> Niggas be lying. Hey, you know let's get like the king. Hey, Marlon, let's the bullshit. You ain't like the niggas if the nigga beat the fuck out the bull. And that's all it is. Let it go. Let it go. Y'all ain't gonna beat me. They're catering to him. Y'all, and I, I don't like that shit. I don't like, none, I don't like none of these motherfuckers being catered to. Not so just what him. I don't like none of this shit. I've made it very crystal clear on this show and on many shows that I've been on. So, so, like come out, come out. Out. so you're saying, so oh, tell me right now, tell me right now, you saying all the players didn't bitch and cry. Say that, say it, oh, God oh, damn you. I need you to stick to the goddamn. <laughs> bro, you said you're old school. Old school. Yeah, they always been bitching and crying. Now. What are you mad at? One of these niggas getting all this fucking money, and they all they care so about. you mad at niggas getting paid? We on TMZ being goddamn rock star celebrities, and when it comes after all this shit, I don't like. But, Ma- but Marley, you got to keep in mind, man, that the NBA made changes when Jordan came through. We ain't finna yeah, act. Hey, cause Jordan was getting beat now. Listen, yeah, he don't want to talk about that. He want to hate on young niggas. Okay, ready? No, fuck like. No, there is no evidence to prove that this is going to actually be worthy to be a head coach. And he won't get another coach job again. He won't what was the evidence? Job, he actually gained some goddamn. I mean, uh, what was the evidence for Steve Kerr? Steve Kerr had uh, assistant coaching experience. Yes, the fuck. Yeah, GM experience. Had coaching experience. Being mm. an assistant coach to Pop, being an assistant coach to goddamn. We only got them sidelines to the same with Phil Jackson, too. So he's had years building up to this. He earned that right to be the coach. Earn the right. Uh, AJ Reddick is a white privileged ass podcaster who's best friend with the, who got him the goddamn job. Stop with the bullshit, man. They it. don't say nothing about no assistant at San Antonio. It just got 2014 Golden State Warriors, then 2021. Go to his whole autobiography then. God damn it. Go to Wikipedia. You'll see all the coaching jobs he had leading up to his head coaching job. Come on, man. This ain't rocket science. Can you jump in? What you think? Hey, man. First thing first, I don't know no Bruins fan as devout as Dex, man. <laughs> in, my, in my book, I say Jordan is the GOAT. And I say Jordan is the GOAT because, one, I saw him in his prime. But not only with the hoop, for me, it's, what, it's the rest that he's done for the game. Now, that's not to say that Bruins doesn't have the same effect on the game. But Jordan's oh, effect man. on the game was way different than Bron. You said you saw him? I was fucking there. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> I was there. But without Horace Grant, without Dennis Rodman, without okay. John Paxson, the, without the, Steve the, Kerr, without Phil Jackson. But I'm, I'm, just, saying, saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, though. I'm just saying, though. I'm just saying, though. And he went no way to do But LeBron did it with don't, different don't coaches, different cities, different teams. Only one got to the Chicago like, like, cut that shit out right now. The Wayne Wade and Anthony Davis is the reason why this nigga got rings in the first goddamn place. Come again? Hey, all right. Uh, LeBron played with more Hall of Fame, uh, more Hall of Fame players than Michael Jordan did. Were they more Hall of Fame players when he played with them, or it's were they? Played. So you saying when George Gerben was with the Bulls, Jordan was supposed to win, right? Nah, oh no, fuck that, nigga! Y'all be lying. Get up off it. <laughs> but Monty Williams got fired. Where do you think he should go? Should he just take some time off or what? Monty, go home, man. Take some time off, dog. Bro, you got what? over, you got well over eighty some million coming to you from two teams, bro. Go That's take crazy. some time and figure it out because I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm of this mindset. Be, before Monty Williams became the coach of the Suns, Monty Williams wasn't wasn't known as a good coach. He had OKC and he stunk it up. He had the Hornets and he stunk it up. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, when he goes to Phoenix, mm-hmm. all of a sudden he's one of the best coaches in town because he had the players. <laughs> Detroit is a train wreck anyway. Yeah, that Detroit, that makes really absolutely no there. sense. Listen, he has the greatest unemployment story to ever tell. $80 million and, and he ain't got to work. Give me $80 goddamn million dollars not to work. Bonnie Williams earned his stripes to, to, and became a better coach. Oh, fresh out of the park. How you feeling tonight, brother? What up? What's going on, fellas? 
Man, I can't call it just chopping. You done had a good one going on tonight. Shout out to y'all. We are the Tapped In Sports Podcast. It's your boy, Mr. D. I got my guy, Big Dex, in the building. I got QP in the building. I got my guy, Mr. Chicago, Marlon Williams, in the building. I got the live five. So, real quick, before we leave the NBA, would Paul George be a good fit in Philly, New York, or should he stay with the Clippers? I'm sick of his shenanigans. I'm sick of his shenanigans, too. I really don't care where he go, man. Oh, man. Send that man to New York, man. Podcast P. New York, New York won't be a good fit for him because him and Jalen Brown. Jalen, Jalen's done really well with the Knicks, but I don't see a scenario where where an older Paul is going to be that much. Oh, Philly. Because the last motherfucker they brought there that was from, uh, that's on the Clippers team now didn't work out. He was a fucking waste of time. I don't think that it would work out with them either. Because and B plays when he I think Paul doing get off of that shit and it won't work out. I, I can see Jimmy going back to Philly and working out with Embiid. That would be a better fit. Mm. All right, Paul George go to Philly, New York, or should he stay with the Clippers? I think his best fit right now is probably New York. New York needs his skill set. They need a veteran score. They need somebody that will also play both sides of the ball. Was- That's their thing. <laughs> yep. But he and them. they need a three man. At first, initially, I liked him in Philly, but I just don't know if he's going to be used correctly in Philly, even though Nick Nurse does have an offense that is that will be pretty good for him. But, yeah, I, I think New York will be better. I just don't think the L.A. thing has panned out like they wanted to. But for one thing or another, it's time to move on. The Clippers ain't the spot. Hey, don't get started with James Harden wasted for- not too much on the beard, man. That's no. the, hey. All the fuck he do is dress weird, go go party with the baby, and, and then when Vegas got their mask, got their playoff game, not fuck show up. Man, get the hell out of here. Yeah. Strip club MVP, man. The ones ain't gonna throw themselves, he could, bro. He, he, could be my, he could be my teammate. We got them playoff. And you wanna go fucking Vegas and go kick it with the baby? I would punch him in his goddamn face. You over here wanna party and shit. Ain't no kind of been won yet. This game part is, is such a waste. This is sat here was on three different teams in one physical field. I have never seen that before in my life. That is insulting to a who actually competes and don't leave when the time and, and, and the road get rough. You can be like the smokers in the world for doing that, man. It's hard to put in single mothers, bro. Hard at all for this shit. It's hard to put in single mothers, man. He ain't showed up with the guy. I mean, he man. He don't show up because he, he ain't got it in him. To- in, in Houston, he showed up, but it's a, he playing one on five, brother. You So he was great. Bullshit. I don't want to see Time out. Flag on the play. So, so you're saying the only way for him to show up was him to beat the Golden State Warriors with KD, Steph, Clay, Iguodala. What about Draymond. the opportunities he had with Philly? What about the opportunities he had with Brooklyn? They told him to let the African cook. And he let the African cook. He didn't try and take the spotlight from him. But now it's his fault. Oh, okay. That's fine. The yeah. NBA got my boys fired up, boy. The NBA got them boys. Yeah, right there, crazy. Wait, single mothers. They just All right, so once again, man, we're going to leave the NBA right there. I want to jump into the WNBA. As you already know, we're going to stay tapped in all season with the WNBA. We had Clark versus Reese 2 go on this past weekend. So is this a real rivalry? per se, and will it be good or bad for the WNBA if it is a rivalry? Somebody. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It is. It is. Hey, this is about to be the women's version of Magic versus the Bird. It's mm-hmm. about to do so many good agree. things for women's basketball, and it already has. Yeah, I don't really like the rhetoric that comes from it because it's becoming more of a race thing, but mm-hmm. you have people talking about women's basketball that a year ago was not talking about women's basketball. So Caitlin and Angel have elevated the WNBA to somewhere where it hasn't been in a very long time since it really came out in Houston. The the, the women in Houston will, will repeat. So yes, I think it's only up for them. Man. Yeah, I agree with that. Listen, I, I'm loving what I'm seeing out of this competition between the two of them and obviously following them their paths and even both of them have spoken about how they play each other in high school, right? So they went from high school to college to the pros now playing each other and the way that they've been going at each other. And so that competitive nature, I love to see that. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. The fact that we have two of the best rookies uh, of this rookie class on the Chicago sky, I'm, I'm anxious to see 
where they can take us and how far they can take us and, and the fact that the fever, I think they got number one pick next year because they still have been bad. But they, they, they keep building around Caitlin Clark. They're going to have a, a formidable team for the Aces and the Sky and the Mercury to play. And so I see this rivalry growing. They definitely bring in a lot more attention, a lot more press, a lot more asses and seats and tickets and jersey sales. Yo, know, Angel Reese, I ain't get a chance to even file. I got them jersey because I sold out before the damn sold season started. You know what I'm saying? So I'm anxious to see this shit, man. I'm loving what I'm seeing out of them. Heard Angel, they ain't there yet, but Angel got some stats already as a rookie. Already broke rookie records. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but I know for a fact at the end of this year, it's going to be based on politics and racial undertone. And they're going to end up giving Caitlin Clark the rookie of the year, even though she won't be deserving of it. It would be Angel Reese who would have the goddamn numbers man. to stand out. Bro. Come on, I mean, somebody. It's, it's, it's going to be said, man. It's politics and all this. And a lot of these decisions are being made. You got people in the sports media world who shouldn't have a vote or a voice to begin with. But they're going to be the ones voicing their opinion saying, hey, we want Caitlin Clark because she's good for the brand. Stop with this bullshit, man. Let them yeah. hoop, Joe. Let yeah, they felt like she swung her arm too much, and that's what eventually they went ahead and upgraded it to a flagrant one. I don't think that was a flagrant. People no, get hit know. like that all the time, just making about basketball. And Patty stuff is basketball, though, bro. Everybody been hating on Caitlyn. Everybody, they everybody they YouTube, but it's just back and back and forth, talking trash, getting physical. All that is a part of the game. It's been a part of the game. Folks been doing it. Like if you haven't watched the WNBA. Before this year, you wouldn't not have realized, but them folks, they been knocking each other down <laughs> way more than the men. Oh, they man. been Caitlin and Angel, they just the appetizer because you still got Paige coming in next year. You got Fu Wiley and you got Juju coming in a year, like two years after that, or maybe another year. It all depends on how they work this whole rule thing about making them stay four years. I think if anybody going to make them push it, it's going to be Juju and for Wiley over there in South Carolina because yeah, of how yeah. they already oh, are. Notre Dame, too. Uh, man, freshman from Notre Dame. Yeah, them, them three idea. right there, them three right there might get them to go and push the age limit down because they ready today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they ready. I'm going to say this, man. You know that women, that the WNBA is going to be real catty, man. Women yeah. are catty. So the, yeah. So if women don't get along in the real world, what make you think in the WNBA is about to be cool? Okay. That, that I mean, is super Saiyan times 10. When they just fighting, LSU yeah. got to fight yeah. the tournament, in the yeah, SEC yeah. tournament, right? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Yeah. Was at yeah. Yeah. Coach, I wish you would have pushed your ass instead of pushing the other motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, oh, hey, the hey, goddamn hey. fight on, Coach. You the goddamn fight like, hey. Kim said, bring it on, bring it over to the Angel. So, and then again, you saw they with Angel and uh, Cardoza were just fighting, and now they love you, W as teammates. That's just the way it is. Them folks, they go hard. And ain't nothing wrong with going hard. I feel, I understand what Marlon said when the guys are too friendly in the NBA, because you need a little bit more of that, I'm going to knock your ass out. So, they know that this is real. What other teams? Whether it be football, basketball, baseball, are set up to become a dynasty. Boy, you, you know say Don I mean? Staley name first, brother. Don't mention nobody else before you mention Don. <laughs> because first day, fuck all the other folks. We know who gonna be who got the best chance. Who's that? Raven? Is that Raven Johnson or yeah, Raven Johnson? It's another it's Johnson. Johnson. She was balling. She is about to lead this thing. Oh yeah, yeah. South Carolina is definitely gonna be back, man. Uh, now, pal, who wildly is it? They too loaded, and they got more. Yeah. They ain't reload. Hey, done for the three people. Uh, mm -hmm. Dan might have a chance. Mm -hmm. Michigan gonna have some shit to say about that. Hey, you know, Michigan gonna sit down and shut the fuck up. No, no, no. But when that's from Hey, don't forget who's gonna be yeah. creeping in the background. Alabama. Brother, brother. Oh, we heard. Uh, Alabama. Alabama. Your own ass Alabama. got that this way. His coach is gone now. Bro, we ain't. Y'all gonna need Forrest Gump next year. Let y'all niggas. I might say Forrest Gump is stupid. Hey, me. Y'all niggas. Y'all gonna cook. need Forrest Gump. Okay. I'm gonna keep that same energy, Marlon. Keep that same energy, Marlon. Yes, you're right. Goddammit. Keep that same energy when football season. Marlon. Marlon, these folks hard. They hired the coach y'all embarrassed that he think they got a chance. What you mean? Because he got better <laughs> football players in Alabama than he had in Washington. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Stop it. Let's be real. SEC is the best football conference in college football. Now, no, hey, I'm I'm wrong. Wrong. we all just embarrassed. We all just embarrassed our whole conference by losing to Michigan. We already whooped y'all ass. Take this shit from us. 
It's the Big Ten running this shit. I man, like it's over with me. Man, Big Ten, y'all just got here, my boy. It's SEC and, and the Big Ten. It's the Big Ten first and the SEC. Everybody boy. else. Get out of here, man. Oh, this might say the Big Ten, then the SEC. Oh, you tripping, bro. Don't make me say it. Don't make me say it. You got to the party, my boy. I was right there when I said it. Don't make me say it. Y'all just got to the party, Marlon. Listen, 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 just get the party. I'm trying to cook the whole hey, buffet. Hey, B, just get that. They ain't got shit to do with the goddamn price of oranges in Florida. I don't give a <laughs> shit where the fuck we got there. We here now. We're on the top of the game. Fuck you, man. Yeah, Marlon, just because you win one championship don't put you at the top of cotton. Man, yeah, 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 yeah. That, 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 that was not but a mistake. Oh, that was a real mistake, man. Anybody that was a folks fan nothing. Hey, man, don't do that. We gave y'all, finally gave y'all a cookie, man. See, that's we why we don't. We had a pretty ass ring coming out in, in this. Don't play. And we had a black coach that's going to lead this team. We go, we still one of the top recruiting teams in, in college football, Boy, too. Boy, nah, man, man. Ain't yeah. nobody coming yeah. to see y'all. Yeah. Otis. Oh, this. Right. Oh, this. Uh, ain't nobody come to see y'all. Oh, this. Stop me. it. Hey, listen. The tide has crimson for you. Man. Y'all ain't going no goddamn man, way. Man, you no. ain't better go check out background, bro. We ain't lost nothing, and we got better. We ain't lost like, nothing, like, and we got belt. That was right. I lost everything. No, we did. Stop. You, you must be thinking about Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky lost everything, but Alabama ain't lost nothing. Stop it. Kentucky basketball lost everything, too. Hey, hey, that, that, that pipeline go. That pipeline go. Hold on. We ain't worried about that. That's why I ain't worried about that. Hold on. That pipeline go. Hold on. He said Alabama didn't lose nothing. That's what he said. That's what he said. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. All right, let me take that back. Let me take that back. We we oh, didn't lose what y'all thinking we lost. We didn't lose everything like y'all think. We didn't lose everything. I don't know what the fuck we he smoking. But the, guy the, real, you know, the, the main person we lost was Caleb Downs. Outside of Caleb Downs, we ain't lose nobody. Y'all no, lost the most important thing. Okay, here I go. Y'all left Saint Nick in that pipeline. Man, no, we, ain't, we ain't worried about nothing. The pipeline still intact, man. Y'all, oh my God. Dude, hey, y'all need to go. As a concerned friend, as a friend of yours for 20 years. Yeah, you got to let it go. I'll tell you, with, with much concern in my heart, put the goddamn fitting all down. Okay. Now, when we, now when we show up to Georgia and smack Georgia in the mouth, then what you going to say? That's we going to say you high as hell. What, 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 what you going to say now? I'm going to be like Jason Taylor. What you going to say now? What they going to say now? When we walk up to Georgia, up. smack Georgia you, across the face. D, what you going to say then? You pass Russia, who was damn near fucking uh, flawless to the guy. Man, I, uh, I, I, I can't. Man. Game, man. Once again, man, shout out to y'all for joining us tonight, man. We are the Tapped In Sports Podcast, man. Shout out to my guys for joining me, man. They on their foolishness right now. Make sure you like, <laughs> share, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms. So, I got to jump into my pastime, y'all. Y'all know what time it is because it went down this weekend. Clash at the castle. <laughs> Come on, Dix. Lead us off. They did my boy Drew McIntyre wrong again. Oh, yeah. They they did it wrong, man. Old Drew McIntyre got did dirty knew, at home I knew in front of his family. That's crazy. That it was sad because I'm like that. But shout out to CM Punk because CM Punk is must see TV every yeah, time. It don't Damn. matter. If it's three, three minutes, three Damn. seconds, three hours. Damn, man. That man, he make it. He make that show, brother. He that man is must see TV. It might have been five, ten minutes, but it was funny. Five, ten minutes. Him and our truth, them folks is the most hilarious people when it comes to that. It's people. fucking. I, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this nigga, man. This nigga is wild as hell. He be yeah. corny at times, but I'm like, he funny at times too. I'm like, he funny as hell. But yeah, like Peter, he, okay, with, he out here wrestling with blue jeans on. Man, I'm yeah. done, Joe. I can't take this. It's 2024. Serious, Joe. But yeah, but yeah, I'm just excited to see what Drew versus CM Punk gonna be. Excited to see. What comes from this Wyatt family on Monday Night Raw? Clash at the Castle pretty much went how I thought it was going to go. I know B was mad that Drew didn't get it done and get it off Damien. He don't like Damien having a belt. But I rock with it because it was good TV. It just sucked with Drew McIntyre. Hopefully they got something for him on the back end. But, uh, yeah, it didn't. I didn't see nothing wrong with it. Good show. Just getting ready for SummerSlam. Money in the Bank next. But, yeah, shout out to that Wyatt family premiering on Monday Night Raw. That was definitely dope. Hey, man, listen. With Drew McIntyre, he said he quit now. He gonna leave. He said, fuck this shit, I'm out. Le leave it to a Chicago motherfucker to sum up or make it better. Because see him punk from Chicago. And, and for him to sit up here and still be given the opportunity if Drew McIntyre's plans up like that, that's up, man. Drew deserved that title. 
What's, name? What's the name? Got this on some anyway. He got it off the off CM Punk's help both times. I'm like, so you need others to keep helping you, which means you ain't the real champ. He now, not. I'll Get him out of here. Yeah, not too no, much real hey, champion. Man. Hey, Get him out of here. Oh, man. No, that, that, that whole goddamn. That's uh, why Punk gonna get that briefcase. That's why Punk that's gonna get that briefcase. Yeah. Brief take it from him. Yeah, he, I don't he, know, Mike. I think Jay Uso. Day one is just me. Ooh, nah, me dude, money they in the put bank. him on the fly. That, that it's just guaranteed he's gonna man. get it. Oh uh, man, don't be hey man. Don't be hey man. It was so good. He's going about it on his own way, and I can respect that. But it, it's still funny though to, to see him out there by himself. And I'm like, how do you just automatically just become the main event? Like, you ain't even done shit to get here. Like, the tag <laughs> team. Hey. You wasn't no match kind of guy. Like, for years, you just, he was carrying bags, brother. No, no you just gonna spring your yeah. guy way up to the goddamn top like that? Come on, man. Just because your cousin is running the show in the shadows, don't mean you, you, you should be pumped up blind. Come on, yeah, now. He, he sure been quiet. I was, I've was i been waiting on him to pop his head back out. He's been quiet on Rocky. I'm, I'm gonna come, we're going to come on back. We got to let it marinate first. It's like a fine meal. We cooking. I'm waiting to see Cody Rhodes, uh, RKO, and uh, Kevin Owens. Team up against the, the bloodline. Beat, beat the dog his bloodline. Cause I, I, I'm sick. Of, I, I am so fucking sick of this motherfucker, man. Like, <laughs> he popping up on, on some mafia shit. Like he's gonna take motherfuckers out, and he keep getting his ass whooped. I'm like, yeah, what the fuck do you get for thinking you? Come on, man. Nah, he, he, he got to get got, man. Shout out to Alpha Academy. Finally, man, kicking tag curve. Y'all think they gonna stay gone or they gonna come back? Nah, him and Otis got to fight. Then y'all see my boy L.A. Knight, all at Logan Paul house. Pull up to your motherfucker house, bitch. Well, yeah, motherfucker, we looking for it. Yeah, yeah, I don't listen, because I still watch wrestling, but LA Knight, I'd be like, I'm trying to figure this motherfucker out. What is hey. this angle exactly? Because he's hard to get killed at times. I'd be like, what is this motherfucker thinking? Hey, that's my nigga. Hey, he's I'm he's a... nigga, though. Like, hey, like, hey, I'm fucking okay, with LA Knight, like, bro. Big dog, you just got here. Like, you you ain't earned the stripes yet to even be talking this hey, much. My boy, 40, 40 some years old, man. He ain't got no time to wait in line. What's <laughs> up, <laughs> baby? I, I want to see. Listen, my two main guys that I want to see back in the forefront of shit is Braun Strowman and, and RKO. I want to see Ryan, Randy Orton out there, man. Randy Orton has had that title for quite some time, and a lot of times, too. At some point in time, him, Cody is his boy. They came in together and shit like that. At some point in time, the storyline going to have to change. Like, all right, listen, I didn't came and saved your ass. Now I'm on your ass. I want my title back. Yeah, that was Ron my Strowman. Before it was anybody. One big son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, Braun just gonna lay motherfuckers out. If they put the two Brauns against each other, who win it? Braun yeah. Breaker, Braun Strowman, who win it? Big Strowman. Strowman gonna win that. Damn, man. Hey, Strowman, hey, hey, no, hold on. Hey, Strowman is a different man. Like, hey, yeah, he, yeah. He's he unreal <laughs> out here. Like, to see him go up against, who is that? Omos? I'm just like, Omos right, was dude. looking over him. I've never seen nobody look down at Braun and make him feel, try to make him feel small. Until this big 400 pound, up, where does he see at anyway? He needs to get back in the fold too. Oh, he, he hurt right now, he, he recovering. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that, He needs to get back I'm... in the fold, man, because I, I want to see him Why dominate. he still getting paid is the question. Why he, he on payroll? He's still on the roster. If he's on the roster, he's still getting paid. Yeah. Why is he on the roster? Because he picked out. He, 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 he a big dog. When he, when he get back, he gonna lay everybody ass out. Wait till he get back, man. Everybody gonna get it. He gonna have that motherfucking title soon enough. The, the next storyline gonna gonna be him winning the title and having rain over this. Or at least it should be. And, and then and then we gonna be watching a documentary uh, who killed uh the black man having goddamn titles and goddamn problem now. <laughs> Look at my Marlon he, on his militant shit, shit no, tonight, boy. Yeah, black man is not good at they crap. <laughs> Quit hating on him. Give him a chance. All right, so once again, shout out to y'all for joining us tonight. I'm still rocking with the WWE. I want to ask my guys a quick question. What are some of your favorite all-time tag team tandems in the WWE? Tap in. Hell yeah. Road uh, Warriors. Team Hell yeah, of course. Road Warriors, yeah. Legion of Doom, whichever one you want to call them. New Day, especially. New Day be corny as hell, man. I've yeah. been trying to rock with New Day. I, I just can't. Like, like sometimes, yeah, no. sometimes they be on. Sometimes I'll be like, okay, what, what the fuck y'all doing? Hardy Boys, definitely Hardy Boys, Edge, Edge Hardy. and Christian. They've been so many. So, so, so many. Hey, man, hold up. We forgot one. 
The Dudley Boys are the most legendary uh, team. Nigga QB. Every <laughs> table, goddamn. Ain't nobody. These won a title like 15 times. Yeah, the Dudleys, they actually won it 25 times. Like 25. 25 uh, yeah. yeah, 25 times. Okay. I, I knew it had to be something up, up, up there, though. I'm like. Yeah. Oh, and they done crazy. did it across different platforms from WWE, WCW, yep. ECW, NAW. I got the Steiners up there. They on my list. Oh, hey. Hey, the Hart family, too, was, was on my yeah, list. Yeah, the Hart family. Oh, Brett, 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 Hart Brett the family. Hitman was my guy, man. Brett the Hitman, oh, yeah. Owen Hart. Yeah, they, the they Steiners, they had to belt 20 times. And then my last one, I got to say, Edge and Christian, because, hey, they was on that yeah, shit. I yeah. fought with Christian. Oh, 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 Christian. oh, we can't forget the one that means so much to our childhood. Oh, you didn't know? Do your ass better go. There's no somebody. Old oh, dog and badass Billy Gunn was still up. Yes, oh, yeah. I'm going to call you dumbass Billy Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. So, most definitely, I just wanted to oh, take that little walk down memory lane with my guys, man. Shout out to y'all. We still rocking. We still rolling. I got to jump into the NFL, man. Shout out to y'all for joining us. We are the Tapped In Sports Podcast. We do a little bit of everything. So, I wanted to jump into the NFL because these folks been getting paid, man. Coaches been getting paid. Players been getting paid. Last person out that done got this bag now. I don't know if I agree with this person, but I want to hear how y'all feel about Trevor Lawrence, he got the bag. How do y'all feel? Is he worth the money? Is Trevor Lawrence worth that bag? Tap in. Hell no. And I don't say that usually to anybody, but no. <laughs> Hell yeah, no. The juice ain't worth the goddamn squeeze, man. <laughs> 300 million, and he only won one playoff game. And ain't been to the playoffs since he won that one playoff. Now, that one playoff game was a good comeback. I don't know if it's credit to him or blame to the goddamn Chargers for being up 27. And blame to the Chargers. Goddamn game. But he, listen, Trevor went out there and played his ass off and got them in the game after throwing two early picks. And then he was able to bounce back in that second half and win the game. But... 300, you ain't even the one of the, you ain't top five. See, this is my thing, man. I think I'll be hating, but I feel this way. I'm not biased to any of this. If you ain't one of the top grades of the game, no matter what sport it is, I don't think you deserve all this. How you the highest paid and you ain't even the best in your vision, let alone in the damn conference, you ain't even one of the best in the conference. Like, it ain't even close. Mm. Like, 300? And you know what? And kudos to him, though, for being, unfortunately, the only quarterback of his draft class to get that 50 option extension. That, that, that contract. Right. He ain't great yet, though. That's great money. That's some elite mm. shit. He ain't he yeah. ain't that, man. He ain't five year Five-year, $275 million extension. I think he deserves it. Mm. Based on what? Based on what? what? For one, we talking about Jacksonville. All Based right? on what? Jacksonville is used to losing. They just got back in the playoffs for the first ten time in what? Damn near 15 years or something? Outside of that, for – that's what I'm saying. They ain't been to the playoffs in a, in a long time. And also outside of that, man, come on, dog. For what? About a month of the season, Jacksonville was had the best record in the league, man. And that was Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, last year was last year. But – had Urban Meyer. Come on, Urban wasn't Urban cut out. Meyer was another goddamn white privilege. He, he, he got a coach that's an NFL coach and Doug Peterson that know how to groom quarterbacks. And Trevor Lawrence looked like they thought he was going to look when they took it from Clemson. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the pay that he got is more so for down the line where they think he'll be in the hierarchy of quarterbacks once all these older quarterbacks exit the game. Trevor Lawrence would definitely be a top five QB. So I think his pay was more so for what they see in him for the future, not right now. Because I think in the future, he's going to definitely be an MVP in the top five QB. Our player. Uh, I think you pushing it with that MVP. I think he's oh, good. I don't oh, think he's going to be on top five. Best, you name me, got them five, got them quarterbacks. He got it in. He was the best high school quarterback and the best QB prospect in the NFL in years when he came out. Georgia boy. Uh, I don't know about that either. Yeah, he hit Georgia boy. He from down and got the street for me. Yeah, he, Carter Field. He was a Georgia boy. Justin yeah. Field. Come on, dog. Yeah. Justin and, and Justin was just as good, if not better. Uh, That's in what college, in Trevor Lawrence. If you compete with Justin Fields for the best quarterback in Georgia, you're a damn good quarterback. Listen, what you're Trevor saying right now is valid, but it ain't got shit to do with the goddamn work. price of car boys in Venezuela. They ain't done enough in the league to get no yeah. reason they got that million dollars. Yeah. I think the pay was just a little bit too much. Let me ask y'all. 
if they didn't sign him to that type of extension, and let's say they done him like Kirk Cousins got done in Washington, Minnesota early, and just kept franchise tagging, do you think Trevor Lawrence would stay? And realistically, who could they get to replace him then? He would have to go to the goddamn draft and get another goddamn Nobody. quarterback. Nobody. Because granted, he would have to draft another goddamn the, quarterback. But I'm saying, Trevor you Lawrence, could lock him in. Lawrence. But less money than that, though. Like he, he ain't came out as a generational pick. He ain't come out as just a, a, a regular old quarterback. He but came. He's been playing to... pretty regular this last out here. Wow. That, that three hundred million ain't no goddamn regular now. Wow. Come on now, we, we ain't gonna do that now. I like wow. Trevor, but he got a lot more shit to prove for three hundred million dollars. Come hey. on, man. That is, hey. He, he, hey. he ain't, he ain't oh. earned that yet. Hey, keep that same energy when he win about 12 or 13 games this year. I mean, he got the division that he's in? Oh, now you tripping. Now, nah, man, I don't know what you over there cooking. He's the worst goddamn division in football. And CJ run that goddamn division now. That division has been slow shit for quite some time now. The work, the weakest division in football, if no one else would even understand that. But, yeah, that's the least competitive division in football. Hey, Y'all miss hey, hey, AFC West. The, the Texans. AFC West. And they got them Titans. Like, ain't I'm nobody out Only one team come out of that goddamn division in the playoffs. Hey, Y'all I'm missing some very valuable here. The, the happiest person out of this whole situation. Daniel Jones. Damn, Daniel got the Jones same. got better numbers. Yeah. Daniel Jones. Saquon better. ain't going to save his ass now. Saquon gone now. Saquon down I'm just street. saying. Daniel He's Jones over. got better numbers. Daniel yeah. Jones got better numbers and his contract coming up. So, hey, bro. He, I he know, know my words. Daniel Jones already got paid, so he ain't gonna pay no guy no more. That's it. Daniel Jones is a fucking backup quarterback. Now it's that, that it, it's he, Dak who got the who got the contract coming oh up. Oh yeah, Dak got to have his hand. Listen to me, Waller and Saquon gone. But Daniel, Daniel Jones ain't got a goddamn uh, thing to save his ball. Hey, but we don't. Okay, it's trash sauce. Hey, we might cook this year now. Don't let it fool you he, now. We might. He gonna, he, he gonna undercook like a motherfucker. <laughs> he ain't gonna do a goddamn thing. Daniel All right, Jones. so which one of these QBs are more likely to win the Super Bowl this year? We're going to take out Patrick Mahomes because we know he's just fucking elite. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy. He's going to But if we had to pick between Joe Burrow, Jerry Goff, Jalen Hurts, and Brock Purdy, out of these four, who is most likely to win the Super Bowl this year? Tap in. The shiesty. Um, shiesty. Oh, Joe. No. Joe lost more than he gained this offseason. It's, yeah, between, Joe. it's between Jalen and Brock. Personally, because you think about the key acquisitions they both make. San Francisco, I'll, based on what Brandon Ayuk do or don't do, I don't know if they're going to trade him. they still talking about whether or not they're going to trade him. They already gave Debo his money. So if they lose Brandon Ayuk, that's going to look a lot different for San Francisco. But my money's on Jalen. J- Jalen is still a motherfucker you got to go through in, in the NFC to actually get to the Super Bowl. And as good as Joe is, Joe... T. Higgins is gone. A lot more attention going to be on Jamar Chase now. And, hell, Mick, is Joe Mixon still there? No, Mixon gone too, I think. Yeah, Mixon gone to Houston. Yeah, yeah so Joe lost too much, man. Joe lost off his coordinator yeah. too. Joe and got his goddamn, it, 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 it's no, no. too cool, his weapons. I think T. Higgins still there. We him. Yeah, we T. Higgins enough. still there. He's still he uh, Nah, he going to sign that franchise tag. That's what he going to do. I know he requested a trade. I, I know if he got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, he ain't got traded. He's still in the fold. So, yeah, he still well, got I mean, T. Higgins. So. Listen, if he get traded, it's over with. Because Jamar mm. going to get double and triple all got day. And Tyler Boyd already gone, too. So, it's whoever else you're going to get to throw the ball to. And then with Mixon gone, I don't know who their running back is now. The offense coordinator who was helping them actually was really doing a good job with their offense like that. He gone. Detroit. Here's the thing about Detroit. I ain't gonna say this past year was a fluke. They earned that right to get there, but they gonna they, they gonna have a tougher time to circle the block because we come and I'm not worried about Detroit and let one of the goddamn games get away from us. They didn't win that game. We lost that game. But the second time we played, we beat the dog shit out of them. It wasn't even close. Detroit don't scare me as much as they, they like to think they do. That we're not worried about. But Philly still got a motherfucking team despite Fletcher Cox and uh Jason Kelsey retiring. They still got a lot of weapons over there. A lot of goddamn talent over there. Still a team. Stop, stop it with Philly, man. Did you not see Philly collapse last year with them same weapons? They got Saquon yeah. Barkley. Did you not see the players they just got them acquired and drafted? Are you? Did you not hear what I just said in my opening statement? <laughs> the players that they got now. Is Saquon gonna be on the field enough? He gonna be on the field enough to do some damage? Hell yeah, he will be. Hey, he was doing damage in New York too, and look what happened. 
New York was nowhere near the same as Philly, okay? New York was all, he was, Saquon was, was the they, guy offense. Come on, man. Are you going to really make that comparison? Hell again this year. They had nobody else to got him throw the Come ball on, man. to. Man. For three quarters of the season, Philly was the best team in the league. And then after that, man, they fl they flatlined, dog. And the Giants was <laughs> never there. <laughs> what are you talking about the Giants? Like, they was relevant to shit. They was never there. Nothing else going on for them. So, QP, who do you think out of them four quarterbacks could win? Joe Shiesty, Jalen Hurts, Jared Goff with the Lions, or do you think it's going to be Brock Purdy? We're leaving Patrick Mahomes out of the conversation. I'm going to keep it real, man. I think Joe has a good chance, but really, my my the one that I say really does, and just because of the team and them coming back in their division, is the Lions. Jared Goff. You got your top coming back in. I'm Ross St. Brown which he had over a 1,000 yards last year. You got your two running backs coming back who are animals. And you got that team that plays defense like that. Man. Dan Campbell is doing a hell of a job up there in the Motor City, man. Them dudes are hungry. So I think it's Jared Goff, man. Plus, that man has been the most disrespected number one pick in recent memory, man. He has mm -hmm. more motivation than most of the other dudes, man. And he's playing for a city that is star for a winner. And the way that they play, with that division, all they got is Green Bay to look out for. Who, who, you who, a goddamn who, lie. Who, you done lost who, your goddamn. <laughs> what the hell are you? Now, listen, I was with you up until this goddamn point. Now, you, you, every man. damn marble that you had left, it's gone. Man. You who, who, see, so, who do you think Minnesota going to be hitting Minnesota on ain't no goddamn year? competition. It's up. The Chicago Bears. Oh. Who are the best goddamn receivers in a game on the same bro, team bro, now? Man. We got Swift McVay on, on the goddamn team now, too. Hey. Hey, we got weapons out this bitch. And I'm if Caleb this. is even a fraction of what the, everybody has been bloviating him to be about, oh, man, Detroit, man, pack that shit up right hey, fucking now. I, Let me knock you off your high horse. Remember yeah. the last time USC had a highly talented NFL draft prospect, that quarterback? How did he do that first year? That was a long-ass fucking time ago. Caleb ain't like these other motherfuckers. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Hey, wasn't. listen. Was, KP, listen just, to me. You're talking to somebody just, who will give USC gone. players a bunch of shit. Because I think USC is the most overrated years. goddamn uh, college football team. Well, Notre Dame is the most overrated like motherfucking college football But he team. led the NCAA no. in turnovers. And what he do when he got to the NFL? Nothing. Not a nah, he, but he see, Marlon fight. is banking on Caleb being not a bus. I don't think he's gonna be a bus. I think because actually, Chicago I'm thinking on the rest of the goddamn team, D, on, on the contrary, the team yeah, that's I, around Caleb is gonna help Caleb be who the fuck Caleb is. I ain't banking on Caleb do every goddamn thing. We got veteran leadership and veteran weapons at his disposal right now. Who is gonna stop Kenny Allen and DJ Moore? Now, I don't know, nobody in secondary from the Lions. We have the best secondary in our goddamn division. We have the best receiving core in our goddamn division. And we have the best defense in our goddamn division. You I don't know, about, I don't know about that. D, I don't know. Look at the stats last year. I don't know about we that. We made the goddamn league in turnovers last year. I don't we, know about we, we that. We were the now. best goddamn third down uh, convert on defense in the league last year. We were five and two the last seven games of the season last year. Stop playing with me. This defense is unreal out here. Montez Sweat came in this did more for us than what he did with Washington. His first year with us. Y'all better quit playing with me, man. So you see that shit years ago about the Bears? This new Bears team, the Detroit better be buckle up, goddammit. It's about to be a bumpy ass ride for you. So so the Bears winning the division right now. They're right now. Cool. I, I'm gonna say this much. I'm gonna say this much. We we we're, we're going to the playoffs. We might be number two in the goddamn division. Right, man, this sound like, this sound like some cowboy narcotic right there. <laughs> <laughs> No, don't you ever compare me to a clown boy fan. Hey, oh, not too much, man. Not no, too much, no, not too much. He, he said it. So I, he put the court in the jukebox. I'm about to play the song for <laughs> like, Guess what? The clown boys who think every year is they goddamn year ain't won since the OJ trial. Big is up now. You, you Every year ain't y'all goddamn year. The Cowboys ain't, ain't got coming. Don't even worry about it. We, we'll be there. But it's my regular season team, so you know I really don't count on them to do nothing in the postseason. Regular anyway, season you know, team. Yeah. I forgot he changed the bro. teams like he changed. Yeah. Oh, what kind yeah. of team? Come on, he, man. I am so disappointed. You. Come on, he, man. You already know what time to go. At the board, yeah. bro, Hey, Marlon, I keep it real. This ain't that have more than one professional team. You can have as many college teams as you want. No. But you don't even have no number one. Oh, time out. Not when I've been cheering for these sorry 30 years, nigga. I don't have as many professional teams I want to. I've been with these sorry sex forever. No, no, I can have so uh, uh, regular season of uh, uh, Cowboys 
postseason of Kansas City, man. Me? Would you tell me I'm going home? Hey, I'm going to win one of these. I'm going to win one way or the other. I'm going to win one way or the other, man. I'm all, hey, I'm not, nah, bro. I already know. Uh uh-uh. uh. Hey, after, after the regular season, Marlon, I got to cut that off. Hey, is it a big deal or no deal? Stars are not showing up to minicamp. Man. It's not a big deal. Yeah. They ain't trying to hurt them still in the goddamn minicamp. They wait till preseason roll around and they'll be around when the team needs them the most. Yeah. Right now, it ain't a big deal. Man. They better. The rookies need to get their legs up on them and get to know the goddamn system. Those are the ones, and, and the second year players. Those are the motherfuckers that be there and, and, and they just got contracts. Those are the ones who need to be there and actually proving themselves and learning the offense, defense, and, and getting acclimated. I don't think so. At this point, most of them know where, unless you were a new team. If you're not with a new team, man, who cares? Be here for training camp and the mandatory OTAs. Yep. As long as they do that, who cares? Now, Aaron Rodgers, he needs to be there. You just missed all the last season except for four seconds. All right, so real quick, we jumping into week five. Talk to me. Tell me what you're thinking about the schedule, my boy. Y'all finally got one. I think y'all going to get two, <laughs> two wins in a row. Finally, y'all should be two and three by now, Dick. The, the Falcons will be about two and three, man. Somebody talk to me about some games. What y'all see? I got a question for D. So since you swear that the Steelers are gonna be so tough, they whooping y'all ass or not? Nah? Now nah, that's gonna be their first loss of the season. <laughs> oh, hold on, D. Are y'all at Pittsburgh or are you at Dallas? We at Pittsburgh. Oh, y'all ass whoop, man. <laughs> yeah, we at Pittsburgh. Big dude ain't going for that bullshit now. Well, well, yeah, yeah, Tom and they ain't having that shit, man. man I don't, don't worry he, about that, I man. Think he ever lost y'all, has man. He? I don't think he ever lost to the Cowboys. Man, I travel, my boy. Stop playing with me. I greatness travel, man. We, we don't matter home or away. I greatness like going to travel. In the regular game. season. In, in the regular the season, I greatness will travel. Yeah, but in the postseason. Morning, that's it. Hey, hey, we ain't worried about that. Oh, I hate that shit. Why do y'all get so much press? Y'all don't deserve it. Y'all ain't done the goddamn we're, thing. Because we're Thanks working on OJ trial. America be hating. And the goddamn glove didn't fit, and the goddamn bass was getting chased down the goddamn highway in the damn Bronco. Everybody love to hate the big dogs, man. That's how it is. That's how this thing roll, man. You know what I'm saying? So, small ass dog house that ain't nobody fucking around. You just make sure y'all don't let my boy, Bryce Young, get a dub on y'all this week. That's all I'm saying. Kicking this ass blue out of the My boy gonna win. Hey, book it. Bryce Young win eight games. He win eight games. We gonna get the eight boy, wins, boy, boy. You own that shit now. Don't worry about it. We gonna break down their schedule. We doing whole schedules now. Then we gonna go we, back and do the listen, team schedule. That's that how we gonna spread out all man. this damn time. That game is a blowout. Caleb gonna have three money for three touchdowns in that fucking game. They, hey, they ain't got bet on the defensive side too. Not good um, enough. God damn it. We got defense. We got that goddamn weapon, DJ. Go, DJ. That, that's my man, DJ. Ain't nobody worry about. It. He gonna uh, clean big ass, man. What is the coach going to do that week? Uh, yeah, old Sunshine with that 300 mil going to put up 300 on that goddamn ass. What the fuck he going to do? Taylor running for 200. On. Oh, on who? On, on the Jaguar. Boy, your ass old with, man. That man. Is he, is... Is, boy, your ass is different than this motherfucker out here. I, I like, I like <laughs> that. that hope. He ain't no goddamn 200 yards, man. Y'all all got hope, man. Hope work down the street from where Marlon stay. Hey, y'all gonna get enough of doubting me, man. I said Boston and four. Y'all laughed in my face. Yeah, you was almost right. You was almost right. You was almost right. Another good game that week is gonna be the Ravens and the Bengals. Old Joe Shiesty gonna have Lamar in town. That's gonna be a tough game, but I think the Ravens gonna pull up and all. Yeah, that's gonna be a good game right there. Yeah, the Texas game gonna be tough too. Yeah, yeah, CJ, hey, CJ. CJ is going to be hearing that motherfucker out the whole goddamn game. It's going to be about 50 goddamn passes apiece damn near. I think, they, yeah, I think that's going to be a good game right there for I sure. I the Rams beat the dog shit out of them green fucks. I show up and say, man, the Packers going to be better this year, bro. I don't think y'all just going to run away from You keep thinking like that this. shit all up. Joy and love, man. You see what they did to us, right? right. Uh, they gave his ass one up, year, bro. which means they don't trust his ass to run that shit back. You, they you don't trust they him to run right. his back. So man, he ain't going to run those kids back. That, that shit over saying, with, man. man. That shit is over with. Yeah, week five, it's all right. It's got a couple of good games, man. You already know that my boy, Patrick Mahomes, he's going to put about 50 on the Saints Easy. on Monday Easy. night. Easy. Do you think Aaron Rodgers will get the win against the Vikings? Do you think Aaron Rodgers will still be even playing by week five? Do you think? Old ass. Listen, I'm going to tell y'all this. By week five, 
I think we're going to see J.J. McCarthy come out because Sam Darnold sucks shit so bad that the fans and Justin Jefferson are going to be like, hey, man, bring, bring the kid in here. Come on, man. I, I can't keep doing this mm. you. Y'all gave me all this goddamn money, and uh, we ain't won a goddamn game. I've had 200 yards for three straight games, and we still lost. I think that's a good amount of time, five weeks, oh. sit behind and try to see the game goes and how the floor of the game is. Man, man don't Donald. He don't Donald. He don't fucking Donald. Like a motherfucker, too. Hey, y'all be on the lookout for my boy Tua. Tua, Tua. Tua, Tua talk about, about Lord. Listen, listen, as long as Tua ain't Tua turned the ball over and hey, hey Tua turned the ball over. Tua turned the ball over. He in the goddamn game. Man. He, he came he from about, He was about concussions away from being the best. Man. <laughs> hey, hey, man. We ain't need, don't even boy, put that bad you. juju on my boy, man. <laughs> don't do it like that. Put that bad juju on my boy, man. You already know. I think, listen. I don't know what to think about the Patriots team now with what's the name being their coach now. So it's uh, Mayo. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, the Dolphins still got too much firepower on both offense and they got defense players too. The Patriots ain't winning that goddamn game. That Broncos Raiders game. Neither one of them got them teams that really stand out to me like that. The Broncos. Listen, Sean Payton gonna fuck around and get fired after this year because they ain't gonna do shit. He mm. got too much goddamn control. He did my boy Russ too wrong. I don't like that shit and. The Raiders are dumb as hell for not going after Michael Penix Jr. And just to let you know, these goddamn Falcon fans down here are still pissed as shit that they fucking took Michael Penix. Then, then to sit up here and gave goddamn Kirk family member all this goddamn money. About this shit. They are pissed <laughs> that they sat here. And didn't go after that Alabama pass rusher that they know goddamn well they needed. Uh, Dallas Turner. Dallas in the fucking bag. And they sat here and said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to build for the future. We're going to build. By the time Michael Penix play, he's going to be 30. Hey, that's fine. What the fuck is going on, man? Investment. Just boy, in case. Boy, and they, they sat up here. They screwed the pooch. These motherfuckers. Hey, as long as he in that pocket. Right they gave Kirk family member all this the money, money. Yeah. only not to give him something to work with on defense. That was the stupid one of the dumbest damn moves this offseason. How many wins do the Atlanta Falcons get this year? Honestly, it's that division is trash, so it's gonna be between Tampa Bay and Atlanta. I think I'm gonna give a slight answer to Tampa Bay because they have much more of a veteran presence on that team. Carr, I like Carr, but I can't trust Carr. I don't know what the fuck car I'm gonna get. I don't know if he's gonna be automobile. I don't know if he's gonna be a pinto or a lemon. It's gonna never fucking consistently show up. And I'm like, goddamn, like the Saints, they ain't nobody to be really fucking reckoned with right now. The Panthers ain't gonna goddamn wear because they still ain't built around Bryce Young just yet. But Tampa Bay, having Mike Evans, having Godwin, Baker, I still don't trust Baker, but I, I trust the players around him. So it's gonna be between Tampa and Atlanta. QP, how many wins you think the Atlanta Falcons wins they get? Uh maybe I say five at best. Oh my god. Damn. 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 I ain't Damn. say that bad. Shit. They still got thousand players on offense. The defense, uh, you know, when is Kirk yeah. Cousins? When is Kirk Cousins gonna be gonna be a hundred percent? Man, we got one week one. Shit, man, he he ain't ready ready one hundred percent. Stop it, man. He's Michael Penix ain't playing until like year three when he gonna be thirty. Coming, coming off got them old even uh, uh support him. We got this. We got this, brother. Man, coming man. back. Hey, man, the Bulldogs of Georgia. UGA better than them damn Falcons. <laughs> That's either an insult or a goddamn compliment, depending on which way you're looking at it. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to see. see. Oh, my bad, Q Will. What's up, man? How many wins the Atlanta Falcons get this year, man? Uh, I'll give him a solid six. God. <laughs> I got five. He, he stays six like it's six books in a Spain tournament or some shit, man. Hey, 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 Q. I got five. Hey, put some, hey, write this down, D, and remember their names, man, so I can, I, I know who to cuss out later and talk shit to, because these niggas going to be talking all this. Hey, man, at least I tried. I tried to get y'all out. Hey, 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 I, I hey, 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 h
Start paying me to tell the truth. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm gonna make about $200 off you this year, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make about 200 Yeah, my money on time. Nah, hey, uh, I'm just letting you know. I'm gonna make about 200 now. Y'all here for getting motherfucking money out here like that and, and, and placing bets or making make the motherfucker get good luck. Shit, I'm gonna need your goddamn luck. Me and Dex, we bet though. We got our bet though. Every week, it don't matter who they play, we bet. And I take whoever he got. And <laughs> I'm just, you know what I mean? I've been winning with it. This, this year he gonna quit me and wait through. No, sir. No, sir. Ski. No, sir. Ski. I need this bag. Listen, listen, being down here, I saw the facial expression on Arthur Blank when the goddamn GM went to go get my credits. He wasn't happy about this shit. It's all the fuck I'm gonna say. Hey, he, man. he wasn't enthused about that goddamn pick. And he, listen, I know some soccer fans down here that is, they've been shitting the bricks since they did that goddamn draft pick, man. They hot out here. They 38 out here. This motherfucker, man. They got Kirk Cousins. What'd say? Kirk family member. Kirk family member, <laughs> man. He gave that man over 100 plus female, goddamn it. He, he, and, he, hey, he's gonna be he our guy until. He's our guy. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? Hey, you man, know how that, I got a bad guy. God damn it. I'm the goddamn lead singer of the goddamn group. Ain't, Ain't, Ain't bring the no goddamn no lead, fresh goddamn face come replace me already. Ain't no spot guarantee. Did y'all not learn that last year? All that goddamn money. Listen, you got either you're dumb or you're stupid. <laughs> goddamn starter. Hey, we drafted him. We're running back and kept our running back. We like to keep a contingency plans working around here. Oh, man, but that's our show for the night, man. Shout out to y'all for coming out. I appreciate each and every one of y'all, man. Shout out to my guy, Big Dick. My guy, QP, the Live Five. Shout out to Mr. Chicago. It's your boy, Mr. D the Kid. And as I always say, live your life. Never let them live it for you. Bang, let's go. Bye.